Hi guys, today I'll continue to discuss the existence of a possible lost civilization, which might have created the worldwide megalithic structures. These impressive and mysterious sites have bewildered modern engineers and architects. Even with current construction methods and today's mining and excavation machinery, we cannot easily explain how and why some of these massive sites were created. These ancient relics surpass the ability and comprehension of our existing technology. Some sites show amazing precision cuts. Some contain millions of huge stone blocks. Some reveal highly accurate and uniform tool marks, which resemble modern machine marks. I have consulted with and received feedback from stonemasons and experts in construction on these markings. They confirmed that these were not the work of manual labor and in fact share uncanny similarities with today's large-scale machines. In my last video, I proposed that about 20 to 30,000 years ago, there might have existed an advanced civilization potentially more sophisticated than ours. This culture flourished possibly for tens of thousands of years, but it eventually broke down and collapsed into the sands of time. My hypothesis is based on the human average cranial size changes, Homo sapien migration timeline, studies on human population replacements, and bottleneck, all of which coincided with a catastrophic millennia-long drought. If you haven't watched that video, I highly recommend you to check it out. Now, moving forward, if there was an advanced civilization with a machine technology in the distant past, why haven't we found traces or remnants of its artifacts, tools, or machinery? We know there were dramatic sea level changes of over 100 meters or 328 feet over a few thousand years, that some of the ancient sites might be submerged. 15,000 years of natural erosion and sediments would have decayed and buried a lot of evidence. Yet despite that, archaeologists found dinosaur fossils, which are far more ancient. They also uncovered many Paleolithic sites with stone tools and human skeletal remains. However, we haven't found artifacts to approve an advanced culture may have existed. So here we have a dilemma. On the one hand, we see these fantastic stone structures and caves that are clear signs of ancient high-tech. On the other hand, instead of finding evidence of ancient high-tech, we have these Paleolithic sites with stone tools and bone instruments. Does this mean all the many people living through the Paleolithic era were primitive and had nothing to do with the megalithic sites? Maybe not. We have to consider the strong possibility that an advanced civilization coexisted with the primitive ones, like modern countries have coexisted with the Amazonian tribes, the Australian Aborigines, and other indigenous people around the world. What if the Paleolithic settlements with stone tools only represented a portion of Paleolithic society and not the full picture? What if we are not searching for clues of the lost advanced civilization in the right places? The number one areas to look for evidence of such a civilization would be where the advanced megalithic sites are located. Unfortunately, this is not really feasible. Most of these sites, such as the Great Pyramids of Giza, have been occupied and visited for thousands of years. Anything of value or interest would have been taken, looted, destroyed, or repurposed a long time ago. In modern days, these sites have been carefully cleared and cleaned out again to become tourist attractions. They also are often deemed nationally or internationally significant heritage sites, and on-site excavation is strictly limited if not prohibited. Non-invasive scanning, however, might get approval and could be helpful. But in general, these sites are only good for visual assessments. Here is a map showing where the advanced megalithic sites are located. Most are found in Eurasia, Africa, and South America. I'm only dotting the map with sites with obvious signs of ancient high technology. They are very unlikely or impossible to be produced by hand tools that's contradicting the dynastic dates claimed by academia. 
Dolmens and other cruder stone structures are not sufficient representations of a sophisticated culture with machinery, and consequently not included. Here is a map of current population density. When the two maps are overlaid, there appear to be a correlation between megalithic sites and today's densely populated areas. I found this very interesting. Many megalithic sites are located in or close to cities or towns. For example, the polygonal walls at Cusco and Sacsayhuaman, the gigantic stone blocks at Baalbek, the western stone at the western wall in Jerusalem, the megalithic platform of Nix in Athens, the octopus stone at Osaka, Yangshan blocks are at the large city Nanjing, the Giza pyramids are close to Cairo. Machu Picchu seems to be an exception, being on top of a mountain. Though on the map, it's actually not too far from Cusco. The direct lateral distance is about 42 miles or 66 kilometers, about half the distance from New York City to Philadelphia, which is an average drive. Even the megalithic sites, which are very likely to be ancient quarries and mines, are not too remote. Although normally they should be placed far away from large populations. The enormous quarry of Mount Nogogiri is only an hour and a half from Tokyo Station by express train. What does this tell us? That the megalithic builders probably lived and worked in regions that are also heavily populated by us now. This shouldn't be a surprise. Certain highly populated areas might have always been popular from the dawn of Homo genus. There are reasons why these places are desirable. Areas with consistent fresh water sources, like rivers and lakes, would be considered ideal. A 2011 study shows that over 50% of world population lives closer to three kilometers or less than 1.9 miles to a surface freshwater body, whilst 90% lives within 10 kilometers or 6.2 miles. And that's when we have the modern utility lines to deliver water. In the Paleolithic era. Especially during the last glacial period, when the climate was colder and more arid, regions with fresh water would have been essential to our predecessors, since they could have provided humans with water, fish, and mollusk. Plains that surround fresh water would have year-long plants and trees for humans to forage. Flatter lands and water can attract more animals, which would be good hunting grounds and a regular source of meat. Compared to the mountains with harsh winds and more snow, plains or valleys have milder weather and remain easier to traverse and transport trading goods. Flatlands can also sustain population growth and territory expansion better than hilly sites. Therefore, these water-rich and flatter locations would have been prime choices for early human habitation. Which may have eventually developed into important cities in established societies. Now back to the point that the widespread megalithic sites are in or close to modern cities. This suggests that the cities with megalithic structures might have been built up on very ancient grounds, which could potentially trace back to the time of a previous advanced civilization. With this information in mind. Let's take a look at where the Paleolithic settlements are located. I want to see if there are overlaps between the advanced megalithic regions and the Paleolithic sites where human remains and stone tools were found. Using the lists on Wikipedia, I checked most Paleolithic settlements and places where archaic human remains were discovered. I focused on the period between 130,000 to 12,000 years ago. When the human brain sizes were larger than our current one, the reason for this particular time range is related to human brain size changes. Homo sapiens' mean brain size peaked around 100,000 years ago, being 1500 CC, and then slightly decreased to 1450 CC 12,000 years ago. After that, it reduced even faster. Our current average brain size is the smallest in any time in the last 100,000 years. An average brain-to-body mass ratio, the encephalization quotient (EQ), has also declined. Relative and absolute brain sizes have been found to positively correlate to cognitive function in humans. Thus, it's possible that the modern humans in the Paleolithic era, from 100,000 or earlier to 12,000 years ago, 
were as smart as, were more so than us, which means they had the potential brain power and time to develop into an advanced civilization. Nonetheless, we are taught that our ancestors only made minimum progress during that time. How come the large-brained humans remained in the old Stone Age for over eighty thousand years and didn't make significant technological advancements? Is it possible that this long hiatus of not much tech growth was due to the loss of knowledge caused by the rise and fall of an earlier civilization? If so, then we should find some clues by comparing the locations of Paleolithic and Megalithic sites. Here is what I found: the majority of the excavated Paleolithic burial grounds and settlements are in natural caves and rock shelters. Stone tools and bone artifacts were sometimes recovered along with human remains. I guess that's why the early humans are often referred as cavemen. Most Paleolithic caves are in remote and hard-to-get areas in mountains and hilly regions. As we discussed earlier, mountains are not as accessible as plains, have harsher climate, and offer less water and food resource. Then why would Paleolithic people choose to reside in remote caves rather than flatter lands? Maybe not all of them lived in caves. Think about it. These remote sites were preserved probably because they are not popular or ideal places, hence less frequently used by humans and animals. Desirable locations, such as plains by fresh water bodies, travel and trade routes. Would have been reoccupied and rebuilt countless times by various human groups for tens to hundreds of thousands of years. Other modern cities in the old world might come from popular and populated Paleolithic sites, and examples that come to mind would be Rome, Athens, and Cairo. This indicates that the remote Paleo sites might only reflect some marginalized early human groups. We can use the information gathered from these sites as a guide, though we also need to realize its limitations. On this map, I marked and dated the Paleolithic settlements between 130,000 to 12,000 years before present. As scientists have pointed out, although anatomically modern humans first appeared in Africa over 300,000 years ago, signatures of cognitive modernity in the archaeological record remain uncommon. Until around 80 to 100,000 years ago, this is in line with the 100,000-year peaking of the human brain size. About 50,000 years ago, a marked increase in the diversity of tools and cave paintings occurred, which signifies major human social and cognitive progress. Around the same time, 40 to 50,000 years ago, humans migrated throughout most of the world. I think this period could be the beginning of a previous advanced civilization. It took 12,000 years for humankind to develop from the old Stone Age to modern society with incredible life-changing inventions. If Paleolithic humans from 40 to 50,000 years ago started their civilization and progressed at a similar speed, then about 35 to 28,000 years ago. They would have established a global-wide high-tech culture similar to what we have today. Indeed, that might coincide with the time of the creation of these advanced megalithic sites. Since I'm proposing that a megalithic civilization was established around 35 to 28,000 years ago and ended between 18 to 15,000 years ago during HS1, I'll remove the Paleolithic sites that are 35,000 years and older. Now we can see that between 35 to 12,000 years ago, the Paleolithic sites share no common land with the megalithic ones. From this exercise, we learn that the megalithic structures are usually located in populated areas, while the Paleolithic settlements are not. The Paleolithic sites, with its primitive tools, speak for humans who live in that region around that time. But they might not exhibit the sophistication level of the people who lived in more desirable zones, where the megalithic sites now stand. Like today, the remaining isolated tribes of indigenous people around the world do not depict the technological level of our modern civilization. Therefore, it's possible that the advanced megalithic builders coexisted with primitive cavemen 
such as the Neanderthals, Denisovans, and other modern humans who occupy different areas on the continents. Maybe initially, the communities which possessed larger, ideal lands with richer resources developed into a sophisticated culture. Although the isolated, smaller, and less resourceful groups remained primitive and used stone tools, the advanced civilization with the machinery might have constructed megalithic sites, while other human groups stayed tribal and almost unchanged. This megalithic civilization, in all likelihood, had buildings made of metal and other materials, but these materials were not as long-lasting as stone and might have crumbled, rusted away, been scavenged or reused over time. We are recognizing this civilization by their megalithic structures because these stone sites are the only objects that survived after all kinds of natural disasters, incremental weathering, and rampant man-made damage. It's known that ancient people like to reuse building materials to save time and labor. Ancient Egyptians took pyramids casing stones. Romans removed old columns, stone blocks, and veneers for their new constructions. The Chinese took rammed earth from burial mounds to make bricks. Isaac Se Huaman, the smaller blocks, which were easier to remove, have been reused by locals to build their own homes. Only the large and heavy blocks remain intact. This recycling and repurposing method have been practiced everywhere throughout history. Less massive structures would have been taken apart. The megalithic sites are extraordinary for their mere survival alone, but they are only the bare bones of the magnificence that existed eons ago. If modern humanity hypothetically just disappears today, what will be found? Tens of thousands of years in the future, one might see the last traces of our existence in the form of superscaled stone and masonry structures, such as the Hoover Dam, Mount Rushmore, and underground mines. Neglected structures over tens of thousands of years, like the Eiffel Tower, Golden Gate Bridge, the Burj Khalifa in Dubai, and other grand testaments to modern-day ingenuity, might certainly be lost to the ravages of time. The highly precise ancient megalithic sites are indisputable evidence of an advanced culture. They are located in or near today's populated cities, which indicates that megalithic creators lived in similar areas as we do today. Desirable locations would have been occupied by all kinds of human groups in the past and accumulated the richest cultural sediment layers. So. Where can we possibly discover evidence of this lost, advanced megalithic civilization? Besides the shallow continental shelves, which are submerged by the ocean, on land, we might be able to find something under and around the cities close to megalithic sites. We could literally be standing on top of ruins of an earlier civilization. Imagine that. If you have any insights, please leave a comment. If you like my video, please subscribe to my channel and share with others. You can also support me on Patreon, which is a monthly charge, kind of like you buying me a cup of coffee once a month. I appreciate your support. This is Curious Being. I'm Tina. Thanks for watching, and see you next time.